Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1972's Jess Franco's Dracula, Prisoner of Frankenstein. This also goes by uh, some other alternate titles like Dracula vs. Frankenstein and The Screaming Dead. Uh, there are probably some other titles as well. If you let, if you know them, please put them in the comments. This is a Jess Franco film, Dracula, Prisoner of Frankenstein. Look at this great poster art here, this great artwork, even the font of the title. And this is from a very prolific period for Mr. Franco, uh, 1972. This is an 82-minute film, and it stars uh, a host of people such as Howard Vernon. Um, we also have Britton Nichols and... Um, we even have uh, Dennis Price, and we have a variety of other faces that you would recognize, like Anne Liebert and, and others uh, from other Jess Franco films. Let's get into this film right here, folks. Dracula, Prisoner of Frankenstein. Now, this, this particular release right here was put out by Image Entertainment, and I believe it is out of print and going for some higher prices. Um... It, it, you know, it doesn't look, this isn't a great transfer at all, and I believe there is a region-free Blu-ray that is out uh, presently being sold by DiabolicDVD.com, I believe. Uh, that is something I definitely want to get in the future, but I did purchase this used uh, for uh, a higher price because it's out of print. So let's look at this film right here, folks. You got some Frankenstein right there. Let's look at this one right here, folks. Essentially, what we have going on here, and you can see that awesome uh, shot right there, is we really do have a film that is meshing the worlds of Dracula, of Frankenstein, of even the Wolfman, of even Gypsy uh, witch doctors, so to speak, but 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 a group of gypsies. Um, and Dr. You know, Dr. Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster. And uh, we have kind of a, a Van Helsing-like character as well in here who is representing a, the good side, uh, the, the, the religious Catholic um, good versus evil. The interesting thing, the interesting element in this story as well that I've never quite seen before is also that... The Wolfman is represented as good in this film, um, whereas Dracula and Frankenstein, um, Dr. Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster are looked at as evil. Um, we have a film here that is meshing these worlds and trying to bring um, an army of a variety of these creatures, Dracula and Frankenstein, an army of them to bring this subdued, hidden, otherworldly evil across the land. Let's get into this film right here because it is quite unique. Even even if it's you know, even if it wasn't a Jess Franco film, if this was just a, a horror film that you heard of it would be a very unique storyline uh, to me. So let's get into this film, 1972's Dracula, Prisoner of Frankenstein. First and foremost, we got to look at the music for this film. The music for this film is, it says in the credits, it's done by Bruno Nicolai and also um, Daniel White, who is somebody that does tons of scores for Jess Franco and has worked with Franco, uh, collaborated with Franco on music as well, even in some... Uh, um, on some albums um, in particular. This film is utilizing pieces of the score of um, Jess Franco's Count Dracula film, uh, which I looked at on this YouTube page. Um, so we, we are utilizing, uh, the, the, the vast majority of this film, we're utilizing pieces from... Um, from Count Dracula, from Jess Franco's Count Dracula, as I move here around. Um, but when we're not utilizing those pieces, this is where Daniel White's, because, because Count Dracula was done by Bruno Nicolai, the score for that. But when we are not, when we are not in that score, we are utilizing pieces from Daniel White, which are 
um, extremely dark, creepy, um, foreboding, gothic, haunted house horror. And um, without melody, uh, really. And then, and then the, the, the vast majority of the score from Bruno Nicolai from, from, his, from Franco's other film, Count Dracula, is just creepy and gothic and orchestrated. Orchestrated goth, orchestrated creepy, orchestrated mood and atmosphere. Um, and you can watch my uh, my video for Jess Franco's Count Dracula to even you know to 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 hear that um, about the score even more so. So what we have here is we have this orchestrated gothic atmosphere, and then we also have Daniel White's kind of um, otherworldly, uh, atmospheric, dark, but um, almost more simplified and. Uh, just providing something without melody, just as if you're walking into a cacophonous haunted house on Halloween night, okay? So we have all these things mixed together, and then you have the sound design of winds blowing and, and, and caskets creaking open and werewolves howling in the wind and thunderstorms and maniacal screaming maniacal screaming in terror and in insanity and loss of mental uh, facilities and, and 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 what goes on at night we have all of these sounds and and this film is wall to wall sound it is wall to wall music score and also sound design you know the winds blowing um you know you you hear that element in a lot of franco's horror films that that wind blowing and animal sounds in the night and this is something that is happening here and it's happening here so much so wall to wall um, even the sounds of Dr. Frankenstein, Frankenstein's laboratory, which is so weird and, and almost oppressive in its sound design. It's such a unique sound design. It's, it's, it's bizarre and, and, and uh, almost surreal oppressive, that laboratory, you know, unlike anything I've heard before for, for that. This is a film that has very minimal dialogue, predominantly in the in the first portion of the film. I mean, the film is moving on and there is no dialogue. I mean, there's seemingly no dialogue. So, of course, we're going to have a sound design here take um, the forefront. I mean, it's almost as if it's a silent film with the music and with the screaming and the sound design. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you... Um, we really get through a good portion of this film. And for the entire film at large, the majority of the film does not have dialogue. I mean, we really do not have conversations in this film. Any types of any type of dialogue is really kind of... Um, we, have, we have a few conversations, but a lot of it is inner dialogue or written dialogue. We even start this film with a kind of a letter on the, on the screen uh, that is being read... Um, to the audience, to us, to the viewers, as we are getting an introduction to the storyline and to the journey of this film. You know, stylistically, holy crap, is this unbelievable. Um, this is a horror show. This is wall-to-wall -wall horror. This is wall-to-wall -wall haunted house feel. Um, we have... I mean, you could you could put this on at a Halloween party, and 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 this would be you know uh, an eighty-two minute horror, gothic, creepy vibes here. We have Jess Franco using silhouettes of people in shadows, utilizing lighting. We have unbelievable things happening with people's eyes and 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 his zooming is in full effect here but also his camera is moving almost you know steady scrolling around as well um horrific zooms in here we also have 
um, unbelievable reflections. We have this kind of retro um, sun mirror with beams on a wall, and Franco continues recording the action of a scene of characters that have moved away out of the perspective inside the mirror of that sunbeam. It was amazing. Um, we also had this amazing reflection uh, through a windshield of a car utilizing the trees in the reflection and also the person sitting in the car who happens to be a vampire. Uh, we also have the, this unbelievable shot of while a vampire is um, drinking the blood of a victim, you see the vampire's eyeball with the victim's open mouth. It was unbelievable. Um, never seen anything like it before. We also have this unbelievable shot of a shadow of a door on the floor opening up into a room. And then you get to go up to the perspective of the actual door. Unbelievable shots here. Um, this is my favorite I've seen so far of Howard Vernon as a vampire. This is my favorite of him as a vampire. Britt Nichols as a vampire is unreal. There's a couple sections where she is um, leaving her coffin, her casket. And the way she moves, the way she feels, the way she looks around, the emotion is just amazing. Um, we have a level level of sexuality in this film without nudity. Almost there, almost there with direct nudity, but not there. So we have a la layer of sexuality in this film that is sleazy. There's also elements of, of um, taking advantage of someone sexually and also, um, you know, invading someone's sexual space, but the sexuality of the female characters in this film as well. Um, we have a nightclub act that is very 